नमस्कार हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू दिस नाइन्थ ट्यूटोरियल ऑन कंप्यूटेशनल मटेरियल साइंस एंड सम ऑफ यू हैव बीन आस्किंग मी अबाउट हाउ टू क्रिएट हेटरो जंक्शंस और हेटरो स्ट्रक्चर्स फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग विथ क्वांटम एस्प्रेसो सो टुडे वेरी ब्रीफली आई विल ट्राई टू शो यू दैट so often in uh, research papers and in problems you encounter these kind of heterostructure uh, if we uh, consider 2d materials so some are planar heterostructures so the 2d sheet is in the same plane and they are very much lattice matched and uh, there you have uh, like a substitutional impurity or something like that like uh, mos2 uh, on one side ws2 on the other side or uh, sometimes you also have like this classic uh, van der waals heterostructure which is uh, stacking of one layer over the other so i will try to show you these uh, kind of structures and uh, for this purpose uh, we require a uh, software known as vesta and this is available uh, you can google it and uh, this is available in this web page of this jp minerals and uh, if you want to do some research work and publish it with this Uh, make sure to mention this uh, research papers to cite them properly so it is a cross platform software available for windows mac and linux and you can download this uh, zip files so i already have this uh, zip file downloaded and upon unzipping you can see this uh, this is basically a portable uh, software so you can uh copy it on a usb and put it on another system for uh, use a compatible system so uh, this is uh, the executable the application and you can make a shortcut for this just do the send to desktop and create shortcut like that you can uh, cut and paste the folder in some other location so i already have it installed in my system and i will uh, start with this one now uh, today we'll be uh, doing um, mos2 and ws2 because these are very well lattice matched so easier to understand and um, the create the supercell the van der waal heterostructures so to download this uh, structures you can just uh, sort of google the cif file or the xyz files as i have already shown you in some of my previous lectures uh, so this here is the materials project web page and from this <coughs> you can select the type of file and download maybe cif and then there is this another very good resource computational 2d materials database and there you go to this uh, browse data you can key in the material you want always make sure it, uh, that you key in the exact uh, chemical formula and it is case sensitive so for example if you want the h polytype of mos2 like this we search and then scroll down we select this and from there you can download unit cell xyz or json format json is for display so you will be mostly using xyz format and also from some other sources you can get uh, the cif files and vesta manual is also available online you can download this from this link so i already have uh, some cif files downloaded in my system from some other sources as well and i will be using those files to create the heterostructure so 
what I am going to do is I am going to open this mosc2.cif and you can see in the console it is showing all the details about this file showing the lattice parameters ABC let's also examine the WS2 and this opens in another window but the console is the same uh, in the console you can scroll up and down and see this is for the MOS2 that we opened earlier and it sequentially displays whichever file you are opening so next was this WS2 and you see its lattice parameters so there is not much difference uh, 3.153 and this is 3.160 so there is these are quite well matched so uh, not much of uh, scaling or straining needs to be done uh, for this kind of isosurface uh, for this kind of a hetero layer or hetero structure so i go back to the mos2 you just need to have one of them open and here you can go to edit edit data go to phase and you see this is uh, showing you the name of the phase so let me name it properly so I name it MOS2 and now I will import right on this uh, MOS2 unit cell I want, want to import the WS2 so I will import it there itself because I want to join a cell so I apply and you see that it has been imported but these are the same uh, positions so what I can do right here is I can again edit this and this uh, second layer let me name it WS2 this is for our reference to identify which uh, phase is what because otherwise both just write global and you can't um, see the thing uh, very easily so what I will do is uh, this layer I will I'll put here a 1 uh, I select the WS2 and I'll put 1 here so in the Z direction it will uh, be placed after this MOS2 in itself on top of that so so it is past the MOS2 unit cell and then it has been placed and you can see we have a structure so uh, if you also note uh, the orientation is a little bit different this MOS2 and WS2 I have done it on purpose uh, the WS2 unit cell I have chosen it in such a way that um, it has uh, this kind of orientation compared to the MOS2 so we can also rotate it and get it back but uh, right now uh, what I am going to do is uh, I am going to make this uh, cell this composite cell into something more of a square one because uh, mostly in uh, heterostructures you will be dealing with uh, square uh, sort of unit cells not uh, or rather orthogonal unit cells rather than the hexagonal cell because you are considering uh, a supercell of a sheet so for that purpose 
you again go to edit go to unit cell and uh, there uh, it can show some symmetry any symmetry uh, it sometimes reads it as a triclinic but actually it is hexagonal but uh, so but not not to worry about it because it's a 2d uh, system uh, what you do is uh, for both the cells you need to remove the symmetry because if I don't remove the symmetry then uh, there will be difficulty in reshaping the cell so just press apply each time remove symmetry and apply so the symmetries are removed and now we can uh, do a transformation so uh, this is a hexagonal cell in fact although it is showing a triclinic here but uh, in 2d you can consider that sometimes it will show us you as triclinic so you just put this matrix 1 1 0 minus 1 1 0 yes and you put search atoms in the new unit cell and add them as new sites so I have a small square cell for the MOS2 I will do the same thing for the WS2 I will do a transformation 1 1 0 and minus 1 1 0 and again select this option and apply so now I have a cell which is orthogonal in nature and what I am going to do now is I am going to repeat this or I can uh, also do the repetition in another software but let's do it here so this say I repeat by 4 units so sometimes this uh, this is another important thing to show that if you uh, want to repeat it is sometimes better to do the repetition at first so I have applied this so I will again uh, have to make it a square cell because I have created a transformation ok so I have this cell now but this is again turned into hexagonal uh, so what I will do I will again go to the unit cell property I will remove the symmetry I'll remove the symmetry and then it is better to save this structure as at present so I just save it as a MOS2 WS2 in the Vesta format because I'll be opening it once again in the Vesta format so you just open the file again MOS2 WS2 Vesta so this is my file now all this data has been saved and what I will do is
I'll go to the unit cell. Just to make sure that the symmetry is not there. I go for a transformation. 1, 1 and minus 1, 1. Okay. And uh, here I am not going to change the number of atoms that are already present so I will just do this do nothing and apply so this will make it a square supercell just a second Okay, again, let's try this. We go for the transform. I can do this also. One minus one, zero. Yes, yes and I can uh, select this one. So now I have this, uh, this is the correct option. So you have to always update it with the type of cell you are changing. Now I go back to WS2 and I again have to remove the symmetry. Go to transform. So it can be 1, 1, 1, minus 1 as well if you put it like this. This will also give you a square cell. Uh, make sure well, if this minus one is the same in both of these, um, both of the cells you are doing, you are selecting it from this global and this uh, phase and you put the correct values. So yes and uh, yes. And now we have a super cell. So right now I have this kind of a large supercell. And what I can do is I can export it. Let's try to export this as a XYZ. select this no option and then you can go to Budai which is the GUI for quantum espresso and uh, you have this MOS2 WS2 XYZ and here you have this heterostructure right so you have this heterostructure and um, now the important thing is uh, that you have to have this uh, interlayer distance optimized because it is not optimized. I have just made it one cell on top of the other. So arbitrarily I have done it. But there has to be structure optimization uh, done. So that is uh, beyond the scope of this particular tutorial because I am showing you how to build the structure. So uh, that I will show you in uh, some other time and obviously a supercell needs a much bigger uh, much bigger computing power much better computing power than a desktop but here you can see how to create the input file so you will optimize this kind of a structure and then you can uh, do many things with it you can calculate the electron density difference and uh, the, basically the how the charges are distributed and many kind of uh, calculations optical properties electronic properties uh, as I have shown in uh, some previous tutorials so the methodology of that remains the same and uh, now coming back to uh, the substitutional uh, doping so uh, that is uh, in the same layer, in the same plane, 
one side is MOS2 other side is WS2 something like that so this is a van der Waals heterostructure one on top of other and you can keep adding more layers like as I have shown you already uh, but here if you uh, let's now operate on this WS2 file I will go to the edit data I will go to the phase so here I don't need to do anything because it is the uh, same unit cell I'll go to this uh, remove symmetry this is important and then I will give it a transformation say 1 minus 1 or minus 1 1 whichever uh, way you want to do it search atoms in the new unit cell and add them as new sites apply and again another transformation basically uh, might be needed for the repetition so this is a square type of cell so sometimes you would want to save these as well so let me write it down like ws2 ortho and save it in the vista format because it is an orthogonal system now and now I can put again a repeat I'll remove symmetry I will put a unit cell let's say by uh, 6 by 6 So now I have a quite a large sheet of WS2, save that, export data, WS2 sheet, let's name this and this you can also open in Burai, just refresh the folder. So here I have the WS2 sheet and uh, here what I can do is say I can select one side to be MOS2. So I double click on these MO atoms. It's a little uh, painstaking but is possible. So I am not going to do it for the entire cell but I will just show you with a few layers because of keeping this video short. So I double click on each of these atoms that I want to change and rename. Basically although it says rename basically it is replacing with another atom. Uh, so I this is WS2 and I will change it with molybdenum so now I have a and you press a escape yes so now I have a sheet uh, of WS2 on one side and partially MOS2 on the other side so I can uh, do the same kind of thing for more number of atoms and uh, I can design it along some zigzag edge or armchair edge and uh, play with it, do many things with this kind of a system and uh, this is how um, uh, we create a planar uh, heterojunction you can say or a heterostructure so also important in this case is 
that you need to optimize this kind of structures as well because uh, although MOS2 and WS2 are very well lattice matched but uh, the fact remains that uh, these are not the same atoms so uh, whenever you are doing a heterostructure uh, be it like this one where the interlayer spacing needs to be optimized uh, minimum energy configuration has to be found out because uh, there are something called the Moyer patterns uh, you will see in uh, research papers uh, that how these um, the relative orientation of the two layers the angle between these uh, two layers so this relative orientation will also play a part in electronic properties and some structures will be stable some will be unstable so we need to take that into account and also for this kind of structure optimization is needed before you do any calculations so uh, that's it for today and I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and um, thanks for being with me uh, please support this channel uh, like share and subscribe and uh, put your comments in the comment section I will see you again and uh, bye bye